today. And probably because I just got back from uh, having to pick up a package. So I'm live and uh, I'm very excited. This, uh, I'm unboxing something today that I, uh, I never thought I was going to get. But I did. Today we're talking about the indicator announcement. It is pretty epic. We'll be talking about the Eureka announcement. And I am unboxing something that I'm going to give you a hint to. Hopefully, maybe. So this was a freebie that came with what I, what I, what I bought, okay? So I'm going to show you this and see if you know what it is. Hey there, Livens. Livens, you would probably well know what this is, actually. So look closely at that for a second. And tell me if that looks familiar. <clears throat> so I'll let you see one more time. It's a pin with the words BBC written on the back of it. So, how do we do this? Okay, originally, you guys know I'm a big, big fan. Hey, Andy. I'm a big, big fan of, uh, of the show Doctor Who. And I showed you how big of a fan I was when I showed you my Doctor Who collection. Then I showed you this. And this was my original. It's my 10th Doctor coat that uh, hopefully you can see. This is the coat for the 10th Doctor. And uh, I've had this for, for quite a while now. Needless to say, this is from Abbey Shot, who uh, were, uh, they're quite pricey, but they're worth it. So, I found out that they, were, that they lost the rights, the licensing rights to Doctor Who recently. And there was one thing I wanted. One thing that wasn't available in my size until I contacted them and I found out there was one left. So this is literally the last one of this that's left anywhere in this size. And I think at this point, probably in most sizes, if not completely sold out. So I'm super stoked about this. So hold on a second. It might give you a hint of my favorite doctor as well. So today coming from Abbey Shot is the 10th doctor's coat. Well, the 10th doctor, I'm sorry. <laughs> Peter Capaldi's coat uh, from the uh, from his first season. As you can tell, it is the uh, it's the black frock that has the The, the red inlining, which is reminiscent of uh, John Pertwee. And it also has the middle red button that uh, he wears in that series. So what's really actually really cool about this is this is not just kind of like a very expensive coat, uh, but uh, it also is an excellent, excellently done coat. So this is something that I can actually wear on a regular basis, uh, and kind of on a fall day, it's, it's a little heavy for like a for a day like today. It's 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 kind of, but uh, let's just see. You can see the back thing. You don't even have the tags or anything taken out yet, but uh, the coat itself is uh, amazing. How expensive? You don't want to know. <laughs> that though, I think I did get a good price on it. I got this for a burn half off of what it would normally cost for uh, an Abbey Shot coat. And uh, in case nobody recognized what I showed off first, the pin, that is the emoji bot from the uh, Billy, uh, the series of Doctor Who with, uh, with Billy Piper. So they do, Abbey Shot does a lot of different stuff. Uh, they do Doctor Who, well, they used to do Doctor Who. They're, they're selling off their Doctor Who stuff now, so if you can find it, in your size, it's 50% off, and their stuff is really, really good. Uh, I can't keep wearing it because it's too hot. 
but I'm not gonna lie, it is hands down the best coat and the best quality coat that I've ever bought. And uh, so I do feel I definitely have got my money's worth. Whew. And the cool thing about it is kind of unlike the, the tenant coat, which is a bit bigger and a bit like heavier, which is definitely gonna be more of a fall winter coat. Um, the way that the Peter Capaldi coat was done, it was done to uh, to be more to be more casual, to be worn, to be able to be worn around with like a t-shirt or a hoodie, uh, because Capaldi was that type of doctor. He's the guy that got you know, brought me the sonic sunglasses, whether you like them or not. So, just so you can actually get a grasp on what I'm talking about, in case you're not a Doctor Who fan. Uh, before we get in and talk to the stuff that I know a lot of these guys want to talk about the uh, want to talk about the indicator announcements. <laughs> okay. Let's start red coat. Let's look at the black one. Because we got... <laughs> already got it pre-ordered? So there you go. That's Peter Capaldi, who people who don't watch Doctor Who, hopefully at least known for, think of it, and... Uh, He's amazing. Hey, Cinema Dave. I just wore the Peter Capaldi coat, and I'm so stoked. But right now, I'm super hot. So give me a second. I'm going to put on a t-shirt. <clears throat> and we're going to talk indicator. Right, and since I know none of you want to see me taking my shirt off, I did that out in there to spare you that. So you're welcome. Uh, <clears throat> anyway. <clears throat> Dude, guys, I'm super stoked. Hey, yeah. <clears throat> Do you have the website there? I think it's abbeyshot. Is it abbeyshot.com? Yep, it is abbeyshot.com. So that's A-B-B-Y-S-H-O-T. It's just the way you think it is. Abbeyshot.com. The finest replica clothing for super fans. And let's see if the Dark True Code is still available there at all. So that's the 13th Doctor. One of, personally, one of my favorites, actually. And there are no products for the 13th Doctor available. I don't think, is there? Wait, yes there is. There we go. Series 9. So, well, extra small, okay. Uh, so you can get an extra small <laughs> uh, for that coat. Basically, uh, there is a Series 9 coat, which is has a red inlay, and I think there is a Series 12 coat for the Doctor that has the blue inlay. So I wanted desperately desperately to get the red inlay because it is very Pertwee-esque. So anybody that's on this channel right now that the knows Doctor Who knows exactly what I'm talking about. Hmm. So did it work out after you got to the Facebook page? 
I apologize, I'm really sweating here today. The coat is really heavy. It looks, it's heavier than it looks. Excellent. As long as, as long as I can steer you to get the, the stuff that you want, that is awesome. <coughs> they are truly swamped. Uh, this is the, the, I don't think that they expected to get like this, uh, this amount of, uh, of traction on the sale. And, and they did, they got like a, a super amount of traction with that. And that's, that's amazing. That's awesome. My hair is so, so sweaty right now. I'm going to need to take shower after this. All right. So indicator, <coughs> I'm still looking at the coat. I'm not lying. I'm sorry, guys. I'm distracted. Uh, which I will put on again later on in this video because I have to, because I'm a 10 year old boy. Um, it is insane. Uh, and I, I'm glad that indicator has finally gotten that recognition that they deserve, especially now, because I hope that a lot of you guys listened to me and picked up those hammer box sets that, uh, that I mentioned during the sale. Because, oh my God, Indicator has announced the best hammer box set that they have put out, period, right now. And it is coming in November. So, also, I got to let you know that if you didn't get Volume 1, Volume 1 is low. Uh, like, really low in, in its print run. So, if you got the bones to do it, definitely jump on Volume 1 ASAP if you're like me and you want all four volumes. <laughs> to be fair, you know, it wasn't... Indicator doesn't do screw-ups very often. And when they do, Jesse, you have to admit, they are really good at quickly responding and getting it fixed up. Hence the Sinbad set. <laughs> all right, so uh, <laughs> with that, let's, let's look at the, uh, what's, what that set is. I did take a picture of it. And I'm going to, which you guys are not going to see because on my phone, I really should have used the other iPad. But, uh, so this is a set right here. And I'm going to talk about it a bit. There are four films on the set. This is the fourth volume. It is, it has The Revenge of Frankenstein, which has never, ever had a good release. And I know it's had like a Mill Creek release, and it's not very, but it's not a very good one. Hey, Doc. So where's it going, Doz? I always get that wrong, don't I? Uh, it has The Two Faces of Dr. Jekyll, Taste of Fear, otherwise known in, in North America as Scream of Fear, and The Damned, otherwise known in North America as These Are the Damned. And let's go to their website, because I want to I wanna get into this just a bit more. Because let me put it to you this way. This set, th this box set here, uh, it's not just any indicator and hammer box set. No, this has some awesome stuff. Uh, as uh, if you've, you were here when Logan Toxic was, was on here before, uh, you know, when we were talking about stuff, talking about hammer and that, uh, Logan Toxic said something that I completely agree with. And I'll tell you what that is right now. Hammer strongest director that they've gotten is they got a lot of really good directors and writers, but their greatest director to ever come out of Hammer Studios is a guy by the name of Terrence Fisher. Uh, he was incredible, and he did a lot of their amazing stuff. Anytime you see Terrence Fisher's name attached to anything Hammer, you know, solid quality across the board. You're getting a good, you're getting a great film. So two of these films, two of the four of these films, are done by Terrence Fisher. Yeah, Fisher exactly. Fisher's amazing. So you got The Wrench of Frankenstein and The Two Faces of Dr. Jekyll. Those are done by Terrence Fisher. Oh, yeah, the fourth one, dude. Hello, hello there, Asian movie. Uh, so that's, that's two movies right there, two solids, 1958, 1960, really good films. Follow that up with the excellent, excellent Scream of Fear, or Taste of Fear if you're in the UK, uh, which is probably one of, if not their best, psychological thriller that they put out. And to just, just to just hammer that in, to really hammer that in, it follows that up with The Damned. And if you don't know The Damned, or These Are The Damned, for me, it's 100% one of their best, most haunting. Not, not a fan of The Damned. See, I love The Damned. I think The Damned 
stood out to me. When I saw the damned originally, I saw it under these are the damned. Uh, and these are, by the way, complete and uncut, uh, just so you know, with commentaries and featurettes and features. Uh, the Damned stood out to me as one of their strongest, like, uh, I don't, I guess, kind of like, hey, Christopher. Like, would you say science fiction or sort of science fiction, pseudo sci fi type thing? Uh, horror science fiction, maybe? Uh, yeah, yeah it, it shook me a bit. Uh, it, it really did. I actually really liked that one. Well, maybe I'm in like the, uh, in, in the minority with that one. But uh, for me, oh, <laughs> have a great day there and check out the Abbey Shadow website. Uh, they do have some really great stuff. Especially if you're a Doctor Who fan or a, a Fly, Firefly fan or a fan of like just really cool geeky stuff. And you got the extra money to spend. <laughs> uh, all right, so I'm just going to run down through each of these, what's on it, uh, what, the, what they've announced, and, and we'll, go, we'll go from there. Uh, all right, so there's uh, Revenge of Frank Stein. The, really the most important thing behind all the features uh, was what this, this is what I wanted to see, and this is what I needed to hear from Revenge of Frankenstein. So it has a brand new 4K restoration. If you're uh, familiar with Hammer and you're familiar with uh, the history of Revenge of Frankenstein, uh, it desperately, desperately needed it. Uh, the, uh, it. That was the one case when the Mill Creek edition, which Mill Creek's been doing like a lot of really good stuff lately, uh, looks like an older film. It doesn't look like a remaster. Uh, you can retire your Mill Creek edition, uh, like seriously. Um, you get like a new and exclusive documentary about the film. I think they'll go with the Amory cases basically, Jesse, because that's what they've been doing for all the rest of the sets. It's just kind of uniform now for those. Though I do like the new, and I think uh, that this here should sh kind of like quill your fears. They are in the Amory cases. Ah, oh, there. Oh, did you mention it? Okay, so you get like a, a new exclusive documentary about the film. Uh, audio commentary by Stephen Jones and Kim Newman, so you know that's going to be really good. Uh, you get a Frank Stein for the 20th Century, a video essay by Kat Ellinger and Dima Ballin, so incredible. Uh, Hammer's Women, Eunice Gason, uh, and this one is uh, by critic and film historian Paula Hutch pa sorry, Pamela Hutchinson. Uh, David Huckville on Leonard uh, Salzato, a new appreciation on the composer by, by the author of Hammer's Film Scores. You're going to get a Super 8 version of the film as well. If you are uh, so an older person, or, uh, or if you're like my dad's age, for instance, uh, the Super 8 versions were your, probably your first home versions of these films. Um, you're going to get a theater com a trailer commentary by Joe Dante, of course, from the films, you know, films from hell. Um, original theatrical trailer, image gallery, new and approved English subtitles. So if you're hard of hearing, uh, you will have subtitles. And I think that's very important nowadays. And of course, there will be the limited edition booklet with essays from Marcus Hearn and Kieran Foster on the set. That's one movie. Uh, we follow that up with Two Faces of Dr. Jekyll. You're going to get a new documentary done by Marcus Hearn, an auto commentary by Josephine Budig and Jonathan Rigby, uh, interview with Paul Massey, rare archival auto interview with the film star, Hammer's Women. Uh, Curse of Frankenstein, uh, I, I'll actually get it for you there afterwards. It was put out on a three-disc edition. <laughs> uh, Hammer's Women uh, with uh, Laura Main, uh, you know, about Don, you know, he's talking about Don Adams. Uh, David Huckville on Monty Norman, uh, about the uh, that composer. Theatrical comment trailer commentary uh, with uh, Josh Olson. Image gallery, English subtitles, limited edition box set, uh, book, sorry, booklet with new essay by Kat Ellinger, which you know is going to be good because Kat Ellinger does Diabolic Magazine and she's awesome. Taste of Fear, you're going to get an alternate presentation with the U.S. Scream of Fear title sequence, a new exclusive documentary about the film, audio commentary this time with Kevin Lyons of the Encyclopedia of Fantastic Film and Television, and this kind of gets into a bit of a deep dive here. You're going to get a BFI interview with Jimmy Sangster, uh, which should be really good because that's probably going to be pretty long actually. Uh, there's going to be a second interview, here, a BEHP -E interview, video interview with Jimmy Sangster. This is an archival interview done in 2008. There is a BEHP interview with Douglas Slocum, part two, archival audio recording made as part of the British Entertainment History Project. 
uh, Fear Makers, interviews with camera operator Desmond Davis, assistant editor John Chrome, and clapper loader Ray Andrew. It should be interesting, actually. Whenever you get those guys that are really behind the scenes, that tends to be more interesting stuff. It's a November release, so you're pretty good. Uh, David Huckville on Clifton Parker. There's going to be a Super 8 version of Scream of Fear. Trailer commentary by uh, Sam Hamm. Uh, of course, English subtitles, image gallery, limited edition booklet with an uh, essay by Marcus Hearns. We'll get to The Damned. And The Damned, we're going to get two presentations of the film. You're going to get the original UK theatrical release version of The Damned. You will also get These Are The Damned, the complete and uncut restoration, which first premiered back in 2007. Um, there will be an exclusive documentary on this film as well, uh, an audio commentary by Sam Ellinger, Sam Deegan and Kat Ellinger, which they're a great combination. Uh, Beneath the Surface, new interview with filmmaker Gavrik Lassie, son of director Joseph Lassie, who made the film. <laughs> Did you? Uh, interview with actor Shirley Ann Field, interview with screenwriter Evan Jones, Children of the Dam, new interviews with Kit Williams, David Palmer, and Christopher Whitty, Hammer's Women, Vivica Linfer's profile, by film historian Lindsay Hallam, David Hickville and James Bernard, uh, Bernard, No Future, analysis by author and film historian Neil Sinyard, trailer commentary by Joe Dante. I knew he would do a trailer commentary for this one because uh, I'm pretty sure this is one that he really likes, actually. Uh, essay with Richard by Richard Combs and uh, a ton of stuff on this. So as you can see, guys, uh, wasn't even joking. This here is an extremely loaded, must-have, you know, got to grab set from uh, from indicator this is the best job they've ever done on any of these sets it is the best selection of films and it is exactly jesse very important it is region free so if you're in in the in north america and you're thinking okay this is a this is a uk release i can't play it on my player you actually can because this is going to be a region free release Yeah, and they also announced Secret Ceremony as well, which I don't remember that well, so I can't tell you a lot about that film. But definitely check it out. Your player plays anything. Your, your player is like mine. But if it didn't, you'd still be able to get it Tennessee because, you know, it's region free. And this is awesome. I mean, this indicator has just come off of their biggest sale ever, which showed that they were they're really starting. Uh, the, it is, I'll be honest with you, it is up there. It is 100% up there with me. And, and this is just me with the, you know, with, with any of the sets that are out there right now. I have all the other hammer sets, but this is the, the best one. This is definitely the best one. There is not a bad hammer. Now, let me get, uh, like, clarify uh, that there's, there hasn't been a bad hammer set, in my not so humble opinion, ever. There hasn't been a bad hammer set. There's been different differing styles of films uh, in, uh, in, in the sets. But for anybody that wanted to get, to really get hammered, to really get like the whole, like the genesis, like just, I don't know, the genesis quoi, we'll go with that, of exactly what hammer is in one package, this is it. Like the last volume dealt with a lot of adventures, tales and stuff like that, which is a period of hammer. Uh, the volume before that dealt with some psychological thrillers and stuff, which is another like, like kind of hammer. And the first volume had some psychological thrillers and it had some horror films, which again, we, you know, it's pretty much what hammer is. This set to me, I guess, comes the closest to showing somebody that's ne never come into hammer before uh, exactly how good hammer can be. And, and giving you like, giving you like a Frankenstein film. So you're going to get one of the, one of the, you're going to get one of the Cushing's. Uh, you, you're going to get yourself. One, you're going to get yourself the two faces, Doctor Jekyll, you know, Terrence Fish, Terrence Fisher, man, it was always great. Uh, you're going to get yourself Taste of Fear, amazing, and uh, you are going to get yourself uh, at what I think anyway is an incredible sci-fi film, uh, and I think it's McDonald Carey in in, uh, in that film, isn't it? Is it McDonald Carey, or did I, did I, am I like, missing up the name the main actor? I do think it's. So you asked me about Curse of Frankenstein, so I'll show it to you. I got it, actually. So a while back, Curse of Frankenstein was put out right here. 
by Lionsgate. And it was a, uh, a two-disc edition. I thought a three-disc, maybe it's two. Okay, two-disc edition, three-disc edition. So it's got one Blu-ray and two DVDs. <clears throat> this edition of Curse of Frankenstein, by the way, uh, has a ton of features on it. It even, even has a bonus, a, a bonus uh, movie on here, Four-Sided Triangle, which is an earlier sci-fi film from Hammer. So I'll just let you see. As you can see, it's a three-disc edition, two, uh, one Blu-ray and two DVDs. And as for the region, I will have to let you know that this one actually is region B. This is not a region free one. <clears throat> Lionsgate at the time, I put out a f couple others. They put out like the, the Dracula edition, by the way, which also came out here on, under the Warner archives as, uh, as Horror of Dracula. And of course, the, uh, the classic Mummy. Which, by the way, is one of the most underrated Hammer films of all. Uh, because this, this is freaking awesome. Anyway, so that's Lionsgate. And I do have to let you know that he's exactly right. Lionsgate does region off their stuff. <clears throat> so you're going to have to be like Tennessee Popstar and have one of those region-free players in order to, uh, to get that. <clears throat> For me, Chris Lee is the definitive, like I know a lot of people are gonna go with Boris Karloff as up. For me, Chris Lee is the definitive, he's my definitive mummy. He's the mummy that I really got, got into. You remember the Warner VHS? That's kind of cool. <laughs> you step back better, yeah, I would. I'm sorry about that. 220 Electronics. It is gonna be an epic release. I mean, <clears throat> this is the release for me, this is one of the releases of the year. This this has the potential to be up there. Like I know this is going to be a top a top five release, and, and I mean this is a year that we're getting a Godzilla set, and, and uh, they're putting out a uh, an Omen set, and they're putting out a uh, an Abacusella Blu-ray set, and we don't know if Vinegar Syndrome is putting out yet, but uh, I I will call it now and say that this is probably going to be in my top five releases of 2019. That's how strongly I feel this set is done and how solidly I think the films are and how solidly I think the features and the, uh, and I know the packaging from an indicator uh, because uh, it, it is incredible. For those that were a little bit put off or were, weren't so sure about the, about the cases with the Norman J. Warren set, uh, you know, you can know that these cases are the MRA cases in the old in the style of the other sets that you got. It, I mean, it is an amazing set, and uh, for people, I, I, I've shown them here many times, but I'll try to l go back a little bit. Indicators in the UK, but this the the set is region free. So just to give you an idea, this this was the first set that they put out. Uh, when you get it, you will see that your uh, the limited edition number is going to be on this here, here thing. You can take this off. You'll get, you know, artwork without any without anything on there. The films are in the in heavy cases. They all have. Thick booklets, which usually shows part of the film on the first, and it usually has the director on the back. And there will always be a reversible, reversible cover. And with many of these, you're going to see it is ABC region free. Every one. <laughs> what does that make you sad? <clears throat> This is the latest shirt I had today. Uh, every one of these sets will have a. They'll all. Every one of these DVDs, these Blu rays will be numbered. So the spines are numbered along here. <laughs> so.
so you will always have quality editions. This is the first volume. If you don't have it, it is going out of print. Once it goes out of print, they'll release them separately, but I recommend getting the, the box set. It is incredible. The, when, this, when they release these separately, they will not have the, uh, the booklets in them. And the booklets in there are incredible. This, just so that you see, like, this is the second volume right here. And this is volume three. Hey, hey, Nicole and Kyle. I got my Doctor Who coat today. <clears throat> and you got to get that hammer, hammer set, guys. It's really freaking good. So at this point in time, I'm, I gotta wait till my better half gets on, actually. Uh, then I am gonna be pre-ordering it. Exactly, no reversible artwork and no booklets it, when you wait to get them the other way. Do this is the one to, to dive in for. Which hammer set is my favorite? The, out of the ones that I got right now, uh, I would say it's a toss up between it's really hard to say. All of them are really, really solid in, for different reasons. I don't know if I can if I can choose a favorite. Um, I really, I really like what they did with Volume Three. I do think that feature wise, for instance, they're they've been getting better with each volume. Um, like the first one is horror centric, and if like Levin's right there, if you like the Hammer Horror, the first one is definitely is, is a solid set. Now, this, though the second one has some really good like films on it, uh, so does the third one. The uh, third one's more, more adventuresque. Um, I know. I, I mentioned it on uh, somebody on Facebook actually messaged me, and they said uh, that the Sorority House films, at least the first one, was released by Scorpion releasing a while back. So uh, that's the. Uh, so that may not be that. I don't know. I wish I did. And they won't tell me, but damn it, they should. Because I'm, uh, I'm eagerly awaiting. I'm anxious. But no, this set here, this hammer set is hands down one of the top releases of 2019. Uh, you guys haven't dove into hammer yet? Nicole and Kyle, we're waiting for this set to come out. I recommend picking up that, uh, that eight movie set. That came out when it's usually around 25 30 bucks from hammer a while back uh i recommended it to uh to a couple people on there cinema dave actually i think it's one of them um to kind of dive into hammer to see stuff like brides of dracula and curse the werewolf and stuff like that and once you get into it um then uh then trust me you buy the set so let's take another walk around so kyle nicole Let's see. Where is it at? Of course, it's going to be somewhere closer to where I was at before, isn't it? No, no, no. Do I have it upstairs watching it? Damn, damn, damn. That set, which I cannot find right now because... Because... Anyway, the eight film set, I'm sure you know what it is. Well, uh... Is definitely one to pick up where we're waiting for that set to come. It'll get you in hammer. It will definitely get you in hammer. Especially now Halloween's coming up. It's a great way to go into it. Deep discount as the criterion set half price. Really already? Oh, then, Cinema Day. This is going to be good for you, man. This this set is region free. <clears throat> That's coming from Indicator, and it has four seriously high quality Hammer films. Revenge of Frankenstein stood with me, stuck with me, and uh, it's it's a different one, but uh. 
there's certain sequences in that one that stuck with me. So you just got to convince Nicole and Kyle that Hammer is where they need to go next with this. I would love to say that I knew what the vinegar syndrome one is, but I don't yet, but I'm so excited. I'm even more excited than this. Do you know that in between the Severin package that my better half got me, it says end up being a late Christmas gift, and uh, this here, I, I'm, uh, I'm kind of getting into pins. Has anybody got into pins yet? Like, to the enamel pins? Because, uh, yeah, I'm really starting to like these things. I got some really quality ones from Severin. Uh, Vice Squad is awesome. Wings Hauser in Vice Squad is amazing. And the fact that they thought at the time, because at the time, uh, I guess my mom was watching like stuff like Young the Restless, right? So he was on Young the Restless. Soap opera still on. And uh, he was a good guy, like a really nice guy. Uh, <laughs> a little bit. Uh, oh, you guys know I'm into t shirts. <laughs> uh, that's, that, that's, that's a given. Now, when I did pick up this here, I got to say, uh, did you really got Deadly Force? He's, um, he's amazing. Wingshauser is insane uh in like in a good way he plays insane like really really good um obviously i got two t-shirts coming from uh from fright rags so wait a second can you hold on one second i thought i heard something upstairs i'll be right back That's it. I had to make sure it wasn't one of those stranger things happening over up there. <laughs> Nothing can be... Did you see the stream where... Well, yes, it was mail day, but uh, I already got it early. Uh, I had to go to the mail, actually, because I got... I'm not sure if you guys get hit with charges up there in Ontario, but recently I've been getting hit with some pretty heavy customs charges. Uh, the coat that I picked up today that uh from the uh, post office I had to go pick up the post office because they had a 60 dollars custom charge on the coat so yeah but uh still 100 percent. even with the added 60 dollars custom charge i still got a deal on the coat <clears throat> yeah <laughs> i would be it would have to be i live near sydney mines which is valentine's bluff for people that don't know my bloody valentine um so it would have to be good old axel or someone like that had to be the valent my bloody valentine minor the killer minor yeah livens 60 bucks that that's not a small amount obviously but considering i got the coat for over half off um uh, Though I had to order it, well, every shot is, uh, you know, in Canada, but uh, they have like a United States like department as well, uh, because they lost the rights to to Doctor Who, uh, they uh, they didn't have, and they were selling out the coats. They they sold it really fast, so I had to go to the U.S. to actually get that coat. It, it's my favorite coat I've ever gotten, and that that is. Uh, that is the honest to God's truth. Uh, 
Pink Sam should release Canadian classic Pin. I would love to see that. That is an amazing idea. Uh, Pin is in a fantastic movie. It stars David Hewlett. Um, and uh, I think it's David Hewlett, right? Because he was in uh, Scanners, Scanners 2, among many other films. A Cube as well, I think. Uh, he's just one of those Canadian actors. He gets around. He does a lot of stuff. Uh, Pin is this amazing film. It's got Terry O'Quinn actually as a, as a small part in the film. The guy from uh, Stepfather and the series Lost. If you watched, if you watched Lost, uh, it was a it was a book by Andrew Niederman. And if the name Andrew Niederman doesn't like ring any bells, uh, V.C. Andrews passed away a long time ago, and Andrew Niederman was the author that took over writing V.C. Andrews novels under V.C. Andrews' name. So uh, anytime you pick a V.C. Andrews novel. Uh, nowadays, that is actually Niederman, and, and it, just using the nom de plume of V.C. Andrews to keep the, to keep kind of like that 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 franchise kind of going. Uh, so Andrew Niederman was a horror writer. He wrote Pin, and if you have ever read Pin or if you ever seen the film Pin, you know exactly why they chose him for V.C. Andrews novels, because there is a similarity there with a uh, certain character and his prevocation towards his sister. Uh, Basically, in the in the movie pin, I won't give away too much, but Terry O'Quinn is a doctor, and in order to get his kids to listen to him, to do to basically to listen to to do the right thing, he brings them into his office, and he has this anatomically correct dummy, which he calls Pin, and he is a ventriloquist, and he throws his voice, and gives like Pin a voice, and has Pin talk. To the kids about things that they've done wrong. The parents die in a car accident and the kids are left to raise themselves. And then the sister gets a boyfriend and things start to go awry. Check it out. It is a really good thriller. Fantastic film. Arrow put it out on DVD. I've got a, a North American DVD of it, but it's never gotten a good like Blu-ray release. And of any of the movies that deserves a Blu-ray release, this is definitely one of the ones. I would be extremely happy, and I would grab it in a second, Jesse, if there was Can exploitation, Vinegar Syndrome box set. And they could do it. There are so many great Canadian horror films out there. Um, there's a period of time... And I, uh, I studied up on this because, you know, full full disclosure, I, I I write, and at one point I was going to write a book on con exploitation. I was going to write a book called, uh, and it was basically going to be about the, the tax deal. Uh, basically, for a while, you would get a really, really good tax incentive to film movies over here in Canada. That's why you got movies like Black Christmas and uh, many of those, uh, and Blood, My Bloody Valentine, many of those other horror films. They come with, with on this amazing deal, this amazing tax deal that you would get for making these films. Um, it's a great period of time with some really great stuff. I don't, I really want it though. Uh, same main actor. Oh, yeah, I gotta get, next sale, I gotta get Corruption Chris Miller. Uh, I'm, I like that's a, that's a Spanish one, right? Is Corruption Christmas? That's a Spanish horror one. Is that the one? Mm -hmm. I think. <clears throat> but I loved Prey. Uh, I was actually I think Kathy asked me about that uh, the other night. She said, you know, I didn't get the Norman J. Warren set. So what do you have, Prey? And she's like, oh, I saw the trailer to Prey, and I didn't really like it that much. And I'm like, don't go by the trailer. Prey is actually a really good movie. So, definitely check out Prey. The early films of Peter Jackson. It's it's the best. Like it's the best made of of Norman J. Warren's films. Like, to be completely honest with you, uh, is is definitely I love. I, I like Prey best uh, when it comes to like as as being made for just abundance of joy. Uh, hey, hey Milwaukee, welcome. Uh, I also say Bloody New Year is a lot of fun. Uh, my least favorite of the Norman J. Warrens that I that I've watched is is the Terror is Terror actually, uh, which is his uh, I guess his Suspiria, uh, but it is definitely the uh, the the least for me personally 
of his films that have been put out so far. Satan Slave, I got that one, Paul. I'll be honest with you, I haven't seen it for years. I have not watched it yet since I picked it up this time around. Eventually, I'm going to pick up the Norman J. Warren box set from Indicator because, as you know, I collect all the Indicator box sets. So uh, I will get the Norman J. Warren set, and I want to do a video like kind of like contrasting, comparing the Vinegar Syndrome and the Norman J. Warren set, and the Norman J. Warren set from Indicator. Strange man coming to a house with two females. He likes that, doesn't he? He's he's like looking at the scripts, and he's like, "Okay, I'm not sure if I want to do this movie. Wait, wait a second. I get two girls. I think I'll do this film. Uh, <clears throat> See, we got like they're totally different opinion. Like Jesse, um, totally was wasn't into Satan Slaves, and uh, and Paul loved it. <laughs> so you never know, man. Like something will hit somebody in one place, and and it just may not hit. It may not hit somebody else. I I talked about. Well, Vinegar Syndrome are getting there. Uh, I'm, I got the Grindus releasing of pieces, uh, and I thought it was amazing. I, I never picked up the Arrow one, so I, I don't know what, what their edition is like. But uh, either way, Arrow and Grindus releasing are two amazing companies. If either version of pieces that you pick up is going to be incredible. Oh, you asked me that earlier, didn't you? I, I, I apologize for not getting back to you. Uh, what is my Twitter handle? Uh, okay. Do you know what? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I'm not even joking. Oh, yes, I do. Got, at Mr. Capital M, Vin Sin, S Y N. Mr. Vincent. Uh, so, uh, capital V and capital S. Capital M, capital V and capital S. At Mr. Vincent. I do talk some political stuff, ignore that, and just, just look at the movie stuff. Because that's that's the stuff that's the stuff that that's the stuff I talk about. <laughs> I also, if you're on Instagram, it is charmed 7 That I do know. Good afternoon, Mike. We are super excited. Oh yeah, the the Robocop Arrow release looks amazing. It's just choosing which one to get. I think I'm going to go with the limited edition over the Steelbook, although the Steelbook looks pretty damn sexy. Uh, normally, Steelbook wouldn't really affect me much, but uh, but it's Robocop, you know, so he is kind of the metal guy. But uh, I think I'm going to go with the limited edition, personally. I'm not sure what everybody else is going with. Um, but either way, it, this is the best Robocop's ever going to look. There's like three versions of the film uh, on, the, on, on the set. And uh, was it a, somebody recently asked me about that because they were trying to choose between, no, somebody in here, I'm sure it is, about uh, between Robocop and, uh, and, and, the, and another box that the Vinegar Center was putting it around the same time. And I was like, uh, you know, if you can grab one, my personal opinion was to go with the Robocop set because it was just, uh, it was just so, so, uh, it was just so solid. Uh, it's 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 incredibly well done. L let's be honest. Robocop is is a fantastic film. Whether you like the sequels or not, that's that's a different story. Or the TV series, or the TV films that were made, uh, or the cartoon, uh, or the remake. Uh, the original Robocop is just a classic film that does stand the uh, the test of time. Do I think there'll be a regional release of Inseminide? Uh, I think honestly, if there was going to be a regional re release of Inseminide, I think we would have got it. Uh, I think the Vinegar Syndrome would have put it out. I'm thinking about it, Mike, actually. Uh, I do, it's, it's one that I want, but I don't know if I'll be able to get it on release date, though. But I do kind of want The Hills of Eyes, too. I'll be surprised if it sells out on release date, but I'll be pissed off, too. Uh, but I know the Vinegar Syndrome uh, really you know, put out as much Norman J. Warren as they could, and for some reason, and I don't know why that is, they didn't have the rights. To, they couldn't get the rights to inseminate. I'm not sure what that means with another company, and it'll eventually come out. Uh, but I'm sure if somebody else has the rights to inseminate in North America, they've been closely watching the Vinegar Syndrome's uh, Norm J. Warren releases. D dude, that is so cool. There you say it. Yes, if you've never seen Robocop, that that's okay because you know what? You're going to get to see it for the first time. 
And uh, there are so many movies um, that, uh, that you want to, that I would love to be able to go back to and, and see for the first time again. Hold on here. I'm going to check. I, I see. I, I don't think it is in uh, it, maybe it is in print. And I'm sure there was other releases of Curse of Frank's on. It's just that one had the, the four-sided triangle on it. Uh, thank you, Livens. Livens, you're a great help here today. Um, I just go to Amazon. And by the way, guys, if anybody that just came in recently, the indicator hammer set is, is a must-buy. Uh, like I would 100% like say, you know, definitely grab it. It is a, it's an incredible, incredible box set. Pre-order that thing. Lock it down now. Yes, actually, and it's a uh, very inexpensively priced too. You can buy the Curse of Frankenstein for twelve pounds, uh, the one that I got, the one that I showed you, right now on uh, on Amazon.co.uk. I'm just going to make sure it's the same edition. Is it the same edition? Curse of Frankenstein, your under counter, four side triangle, bonus tales of Frankenstein, Team V pilot. Yep, it's the one. It is. I mean, it's hard. It's hard, guys, when to keep up with the with the amount of stuff that's out there. Uh, like there has been a couple of sales recently, guys, and I, like there was the uh, the recent like uh, you know the Raro sale, and there was the uh, God, uh, there was you know there was the indicator sale, and I just I just couldn't. It came to a point where I you know there was a freight rag sale, uh, but uh, I just got an expensive coat. And uh, I said, okay, I'll get the Fright Rag stuff because I, you know, every once in a while I realize I can't clothe myself with DVDs. The Twilight Time sale, yeah, exactly. Uh, there, there's been a ton of these of these sales going on right now. And it just seems like as soon as the sale ends, like you just got like, maybe you got like 10 seconds of breathe and then there's another sale popping up. And I am sure that like we're going to get October sales coming up. Uh, and uh, right after that, then you're, you're going to get like, uh, obviously, <laughs> I can, by the way, I got to say this cause I noticed this on your, on your, on your Instagram, um, Kyle's new hair. I really like it. It suits you, dude. Cause I notice these things cause I'm stylish cause, cause I pay hundreds of dollars for a coat. That's why I am. <laughs> um, Hope it didn't hurt my microphone there. Oh, I don't think it's really that a fact of them disposing of Chris Riley and the Mummy, uh, as a well, you kind of have to. But uh, as a fact, I don't think Chris Riley would have came back for the other Mummy's films. Uh, by that time, you know, he'd gone on to do Dracula, and you know, he was kind of like uh, he's a Renaissance man, and he's very, he's very, you know, these movies are important to him. And he didn't really want to come back for a lot of the Dracula films, but they'd call him. They'd say, you know, you got to come back. You got to do this. Michael Palin. I haven't seen that movie in a long time, actually. Good movie, but I haven't seen it in a long time. I, the, my next, I guess my next releases that are coming, uh, I'm not sure if they're my Doctor Who releases, because i got some Doctor Who stuff coming. And, uh, you know, the new Blu-rays are coming out. And there's the Kinos as well. Now I'm looking at some Severin stuff, and I, I have no idea what's going on with Vinegar Syndrome. Uh, I just know there's some stuff coming out. More Jalos would be fantastic. Mexican horror. Mexican horror is something that I, I kind of expect Severin to do. Off topic. Okay, fan of Halloween three. Recently watched. And I love Halloween three. Uh, Halloween three is written by uh, by UK uh, science fiction author Nigel Neal, who uh, did the Quatermass films they were actually put out by Hammer. So if you're a fan of that film, you may want to check out uh, Quatermass, you know, stuff like, you know, The Creeping Unknown, uh, you know, Quatermass 2, and Quatermass in the Pit. And yeah, Tom Atkins. Gotta love the stash, man. <laughs> yeah, it works. I mean, obviously... That's not what he went with in the long run because people went to went there. Remember, this was the time before social media and before the internet and all that type of stuff. So a lot of people went into Halloween three 
thinking, well, where's Michael Myers? And when they saw that he wasn't in the film, at the time, they got extremely upset. And uh, some people walked out, some people were very upset. They, ran, they wrote angry letters to Fangoria magazine about uh, Michael Myers not being in the film. And then there were the freaks like me that liked that right from the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> because I just thought it was kind of a cool, fun little film um, that I that I enjoyed. I was uh, I saw Nigel Neal's. Uh, I'm a big fan of Nigel Neal. Of course, they changed the script quite a bit because his the film there uh, it is the same series. I'll bring it over in a second. I'll show you, scholar. Um, the I lost my train of thought there, didn't I? Oh God, I do that all the time. I was talking about Halloween, and I said I lost it. I was seeing Eyes for the, I, I do own Eyes for the Face. I got the Criterion edition of it. Uh, it is an amazing film, and it I really like it. Obviously, it Billy Idol liked it because he wrote a song under that name. I, I'm glad you asked that uh, because actually I'm looking at getting the Hemisphere Horror box set. I did have the Blood Idol one pre-ordered, by the way, from Amazon. And you know what? They sold out. So I didn't get it. So I was one of the few people that didn't get the Blood, the Blood Idol one. Um, but uh, I do, there's still Hemisphere Horror ones left. And I am strongly looking at getting that and reviewing it during the uh, Halloween 31 Days of Horror. So that is something that is like a strong consideration right now. Oh, thanks, Jesse. <laughs> okay, so now your Neil's script for for Halloween three is actually more nihilistic than what you got to see on the screen. Uh, it's much darker and much more nihilistic. They actually changed it. So the version of Halloween three that you see is the happier version of that film. Just think about that with that ending. That's the happier version of Halloween 3. And it basically ends in much the same way of, of the original Invasion of the Bus Snatchers. Uh, in a very kind of dark thing way. But uh, apparently, no, it was, it, was, it was, that's the happier one. I love regional horror. I'm so glad you guys are into regional horror. I am. Uh, See, I got to get more to exercise in the way that I got you guys into horror because, because I need to. My, uh, my better half is exercising a lot recently, and uh, she's gotten me into it a bit, but I need to get into it more because she's, she's looking damn fine, and I'm just looking like me. That's it. Uh, <clears throat> oh, yeah, I was going to show you the, uh, the Dracula, right? Okay, right back. All right, this should work. In case it hasn't come across today, <laughs> I would definitely take you up on that, guys. Because <clears throat> next time, last time I was in Ontario, of course I was in Toronto, <clears throat> because that's where I, I normally go at, uh, Toronto or Ottawa. But if you guys aren't too far out, we'll definitely meet up. You guys can put me through the ringer and, and watch me sweat profusely. It's never been that bad when it comes to sweating. But anyway. All right, this is the Dracula one that they, that's there. So Warner Archives got a really nice looking edition of this as well. This is the uh, three to set. Again, one Blu-ray, two DVDs. Feature-wise, on this you're going to get Dracula Reborn, a new documentary, Resurrecting Dracula, another documentary on the, on the restoration, Censoring Dracula, a documentary on the original cuts to the film. You will get the BFI 2007 re restoration version of Dracula. You're going to get the Hammer 2012 restoration of Dracula. You're going to get a new auto commentary by Marcus Hearns and Jonathan Rigby. Uh, you will get a The Demon Lover, Dra Christopher Frailing and Dracula, all four surviving Japanese reels. Uh, Unrestored, The World of Hammer Dra episode with Dracula and the Undead. Janina Fay reads Stoker at the Vault Festival and Still Gallery over 100 fully, over 100 fully restored and rare images. And although it says a booklet, I'm guessing that book 
booklet is a p it is okay the booklet is a pdf so it says a booklet but it means a pdf booklet this is it right here and there is a ton of features i'm not sure feature wise what the warner archives edition has uh so i would not be able to tell you also this is the the mummy that came out from uh from them and again you get the world of hammer you're, you're gonna get like uh audio commentary you're gonna get two aspect ratios for the film get a new documentary on this as well you're gonna document called hammer repertory company documentary uh, memories of Bray studios um, some incredible stuff. stolen face tonight wow okay all right I so I own this movie I've watched some of the features I didn't realize this had a bonus movie on it I'm gonna have to watch this again <laughs> So, Stolen Face. I don't remember that one. 1952 Hammer feature film. Yes, they did. Uh, one of the I don't have Monster from Hell, unfortunately, but my dad has it. It's a really nice looking release, and uh, they uh, not surprising Jesse. And they did release uh, the uh, the Frank Stein Monster from Hell. It's one that I still have to get myself. That's the one with uh, Peter Cushing and Shane, Bry Shane Bryant in it. No, the re the Studio Canal ones are uh, these here are are Lionsgate. Now, there are Studio Canal releases out there. They are really good looking releases. Uh, the Studio Canal releases, on, they don't have a lot of features on them, but they got like really sexy slip covers. Uh, their version of Scars is, is, is amazing. Um, they've just put out some really, really great releases, some really great cover art on, on those releases as well, uh, which I definitely recommend. You know, if, you're, if you're in the UK, pick up Studio Canal releases. If, if you're in uh, North America, you know, you get to choose between Screen Factory or Studio Canal. The Studio Canal ones tend to be fairly inexpensive at times, so keep an eye on them because uh, they do go down in price and uh, they, they are definitely ones to look into getting. Now, Final Cut put out a few uh, Hammer films as well, which I will show you really quickly. Uh, they put it out, because I got these on like other sets as well, but I wanted the commentaries, which I didn't have on my other set. So this is uh, Captain Clegg. Tech oh, I remember that film actually. Oh, that's true. This is Kiss the Vampire, which is on that eight film set that Cinema Dave got. Uh, I got the eight film set, but why do I have this one as well? Well, this one's given me by my dad because he knows I'm a feature whore. And there was a commentary by with Edward DeSouza and Jennifer Daniel on this one here. And I'm a commentary guy. And it, they put out Phantom of the Opera as well uh, with the making of on there. And as you can see, the final cut editions of hammer are a little bit thinner cases than the than these lion's gates and the reason for that basically is uh because uh well it's one one disc and this is three discs <clears throat> a network has some too i mean they're all i mean hammer's all over the place the thing is that hammer you know they were a company that's been around since the 1930s uh, I think one of their first films is The Mystery of the Marie Celeste. That's, and that's Bill Lugosi, right? Uh, Captain Clegg, I'm sure it goes under another title. Uh, I'm not sure. Does it say in the back? Because I am pretty sure it goes under another title. But I don't know it right now. My, if my dad was here, he'd be able to rhyme it off right away. And that's the complete and honest truth. Uh, but, uh, but me, I... Uh, Vampire Lovers, Count Jack, Hands of the Ripper. See, we got those here, Libbins, under, under Snap. Snap's label put, did amazing editions. Well, for Vampire Lovers, was Scream Factory. Uh, but uh, we got Twins of Evil, uh, Vampire Circus, uh, Hands of the Ripper, uh, all come out under uh, Snap's label. And I do recommend, if, if you're in Hammer at all, uh, then the uh, Snap's editions that they put out, they're incredible. Like, they're Twins of Evil, Peter Cushing. It's a really good Peter, Peter Cushing film, actually. And has the Collins twins, it uh, it, it it's amazing, and they have an 84 minute documentary. It's almost the length of the damn film itself, on uh, on Carmilla and the Carmilla trilogy, kind of based on the Karenstein trilogy that Hammer did, and uh, and they go into the like, the ad, like the book itself, and uh, they go into all different. They really dive deep. I know. Sadly true. Arrow did Hammer. Under the Baskervilles, I, I wish, yeah, because Cushing was so good. Like Cushing did other homes, just not under Hammer. 
Uh, see, I don't, if Levens, if you ever get the chance, I'm not sure if you got a region free player or not. I, I recommend like grab like grab that uh grab that edition of twins because it's really good. Anything in the mail? Did you get anything? Come on, Mr. J, anything in the mail? <clears throat> but uh Have you done? That's happened to me before. I have a Seeky, uh, S E I K I. Uh, I actually have two of them. I have one upstairs and one downstairs. Uh, they, uh, they were a company that, uh, that for a while you could find at Walmart and other places as well. So when I could find them, I, I, grabbed, I grabbed two. Uh, 220 Electronics is the company that a lot of people get stuff. Pray. I have, uh, guys, but I'll be honest with you, I don't remember it very well. Um, I remember the case so well. I mean, I remember rent, like, Prey was in, had this, like, you'd go, it had, like, this, uh, it would be in this, like, plastic case. And you know those hard boxes that VHS has had, right? And there'd be this, like, kind of this this axe, and when it had a kind of a blue U over it and had the Prey on it. But uh, I, I don't remember. Uh, I know it's kind of a supernaturally slasher film. It's, it's yeah, it, it's not... You've got to understand going in for one of these movies, uh, you got to take it into the context that, that it is. Uh, it isn't a good film, uh, but it is a film that's been out of print and unable to find for a long, long time. So uh, that gets people excited about it. It's not human. Th th that's a great tagline. It's not human and it's got an axe. Uh, but I honestly, I don't remember. I'd have to watch it again. See, I never watch movies on YouTube. I can't do that. I feel guilty. I'd feel guilty. Uh, see, my dad's done that. Uh, like, I guess I'd watch, like, uh, if it was region free. Uh, <laughs> I'm just one of those, you know, sick in the muds, I guess. <clears throat> because. Yeah, the tagline almost makes it worth the buy alone. Um, but it's coming out at the same time as The Hills of Ice 2. And uh, I guess you consider them in similar quality. If you wanted to, uh, to put, it, put it that way. Because uh, The Hills of Ice 2 is quite the interesting film itself. Where else are you going to watch a movie, right? That has a flashback from a dog. Uh, I'm not even joking. The Hills of Ice 2... If you've never seen it, um, it painfully pads the film and a, with a flashback from a dog. Flashbacks everybody from original film. So do you have to give a dog flashback? Yes, I 110% think that Trilogy of Terror 2 is worth picking up. I think that Trilogy of Terror 2 actually holds up extremely well. Uh, and that it needs to be, uh, that it needs to be watched. More people need to see it because I think as a sequel it gets unfairly maligned and actually is, is, is solid. Uh, I love Lizette Anthony in it. I think she does a fantastic job. <clears throat> and uh, the fact that they announced that, <laughs> uh, that, uh, that, she's, that they interviewed her for the Kino edition of Trilogy of Terror 2 makes it a must. And I will let you know right now that Trilogy, Trilogy of Terror 2, if you guys are watching 31 Days Horror with me, is one of the movies I'm going to be watching for uh, the 31 Days Horror. Have I ever had a flash? I guess I've had several flashbacks, unfortunately, uh, for various reasons. Uh, <clears throat> but, uh, but yeah, no, it's a good one. I mean, I, did you like the first one? It's like the first one, but it's creepier in, in certain ways. Miss <laughs> Cass. <clears throat> I'm going to try and keep up with Third Days of Horror. Like, I'm working, I start work later on this month, and I'm going to be working during uh, the Third Days of Horror, so it's going to be, it's, it's, I'm going to try and, and set, a, set a schedule. Uh, there may be some days where, if, if it's really intense, I'll, I'll, I'm going to be done doing like kind of two movies at once type of thing. Uh, I, I'm just planning things out right now. Uh, they have seven lives of flashbacks to go through. 
<clears throat> but uh, it's a uh, yeah, it, it, it's insane. I mean, I, I'm working on stuff. There's some Severin stuff that I'm looking at for this. There's some Kino stuff. Uh, there's uh yeah, there's there may be some vinegar syndrome stuff. Yes, I, I will be. Uh, when I'll be doing my 31 Days of Horror, whether I do them on a daily basis or I do like a, a series and I watch three movies or something like that and then I talk about those films, I will be doing live videos. So, <clears throat> I'm totally, not, I can't wait on, the, on Trilogy of Terror 2 because I will get, a, definitely will have an Asian film within there. I always do. I always try to put one, put one or two in there. Uh, my kids were here. I would be. I would have a lot more because they really know their stuff. Uh, so, so what I'm going to try and do is I will make them all alive, because uh, as far as I know, that's I'm going to be the the only person going live for that for that, and it, it'll be different. I think so. I mean, uh, when you really, I can't think of another one that actually like kind of really does that. Uh, cause yeah, cause the Zuni doll, like obviously there's a Zuni doll segment in the second one, like there is in the first one. Um, that may be what I use because I do have the bloodthirsty trilogy here and I've been meaning to watch them and, uh, and, re and, and review them. If you've never seen the bloodthirsty trilogy guys, it's really actually really cool. And if you've ever watched the hammer style of stuff, then it's the uh, Japanese version of the hammer films. But no, Trilogy of Terror 2, by the way, guys, Karen Black is in the first one. Uh, she, she is not in the sequel. Um, the, what they did was they got another actress and focused on her to go throughout the three stories. Uh, Karen Black did the uh, original and did the first three. Lizette Anthony is the actress that they focus on for the second one, and she does the second three. Um, if uh, you're not familiar with Lizette Anthony, if i got to get this right because I got mixed it up last time. I mixed it up with uh, Lydia Denier last time. Uh, is that Anthony was in the revival of Dark Shadows, which came on in the 90s with Ben Cross, and she played Angelique. So uh, that'll... Now, I'm not sure I got that right, and I am going to check to make sure that I got the correct, but I think Lizard Anthony played Angelique. I'm going to high-five myself to get it right. Because I cannot believe last time I mixed her up with uh, Lydia Denier. She was in Dracula, Dead and Loving It, Crawl. Yes, she is Angelique. High five to me. <clears throat> and which one? She was the main villain in, uh, in Dark Shadows. People always think it's, it's Barnabas. But uh, it, it's... Uh... But Barnabas is <laughs> is the uh, which, but it was, it was actually her. She she curses Barnabas. Spoiler alert for a series that's way old. Speaking of Dark Shadows, I have to ask a question: Has anybody picked a Master of Dark Shadows from Severin yet? The documentary. Because I want to do one documentary for my Thirty One Days of Horror, and that is looking like a strong possibility, especially where I'm going to be do, doing Trilogy of Terror Two. It has a Dan Kurtz connection to it. And I am kind of theming certain days. So, has anybody picked up or seen the Masters, uh, Master of Dark Shadows documentary that they put out recently? Anybody? I'm guessing that's a no, then, because you guys got it all quiet. One Whisper to a Scream is your favorite? I, I got to say, guys, from Whisper to a Scream, I love the film. I, I, I like... I like Burn. I like Jeff Burr. I like his stuff. I, I'm a really big fan of Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3. <clears throat> um, oh, yeah. Al Amps documentary, day one. Um, but uh, there's a documentary on From Whisper to a Scream on the Scream Factory. Like, it's a full-length documentary. That documentary was so good. I was so impressed with it that I think it was the first time ever uh, on my channel, this is back in the day, right? Uh, that I legitimately was so excited about the documentary on that on that Whisper to a Scream, Scream Factory Blu-ray. If you don't have it, I do recommend you pick it up, because uh, Kyle is right. And that I, I reviewed the documentary. Uh, I I gave the documentary its, its own review, 
And the uh, guys that made the documentary uh, actually uh, came on my, my Facebook page at the time, well, I'm on, on my YouTube page, and actually, uh, actually commented on that, which I thought was, uh, was pretty awesome. Did you get the Michael Myers cereal shirt? That is so cool. <clears throat> I love that shirt. Isn't that an awesome shirt? I gotta find mine. Where do I gotta put that? Where do I have it? Do I have to put? See, Kyle, Nicole, <clears throat> I will lead you down the path <laughs> of uh, of cheesy movies. All right, I am going to head out soon. So what does that mean? I'm going to wear my coat. Because, if I am correct, we're trying to get a rental car, which, fingers crossed, we'll get. But for now, I'm thinking about heading out to the store just in case it doesn't come today. Uh, oh yeah, the, you guys weren't here for the first of this. This here is the, I'm not sure if you guys watched Dr. Who, but this is the Capaldi Who Coat. So, which means it goes down up very much like this. Uh, well, you could do it up like that, I guess, like the whole... I haven't done that yet. With the buttons, so... The key red button on each of the sleeves. I love this coat. I adore this coat. So... I just gotta get a pair of sunglasses to put in the thing for when I'm wearing this. And this this actually comes from uh, from the the Thirteenth uh, Doctor <clears throat> Capaldi, who is my f one of my favorite D Doctor Who's of the new series, uh, if not my favorite. Anyway, I am going to go and get some tea, and then I'm going to go out and do some shopping, which is grocery shopping. So it's not the fun stuff. It's not the kind of stuff that you're uh, that you really get excited about. It's the grocery stuff. So I want to say. I think it is. Uh, well, this one is done by. Let's see. Sure, the Abbey Shot logo on the inside because they even got the tags still left on there. Ooh, what is this? Oh, it's probably an extra button. Uh, there's the. Doctor Who tag. The good thing about this is. So that I don't like rip this or hurt this has the option of taking this out this way, which I would do when I get off camera, I think. If I can't do it now. And I can't. All right. Ah. Come on. There we go. I think this here is it's an extra button. Yep, they got a couple extra buttons on the inside there. Twelfth Doctor's Series 9 coat. And for me, he is definitely the best of the, uh, of the newer Doctors. So I am going to change into my Pet Cemetery shirt, t-shirt, and go out and get my, get my shopping done. Uh, because the cool thing about, uh, about this coat is you can wear it with the t-shirt which is amazing because there's not a lot of frocks you can wear with the t-shirt but this one actually works but not with the gray with black thanks for watching i am aaron this is the movie library you guys are the movie club thank you for coming in remember pre-order the indicator hammer set you will thank me for it it's amazing i'm super excited because i've got my favorite doctor coat and I'm going to go out and uh, 
do some shopping, and wear a nice coat. Have a great evening. For right now, it's time for tea.